What's up, Gen Coop Squad? We're here again with another video with the Genesis. Yes, I did get another add on to the car. No, unfortunately, I did not record it. Um, there was multiple reasons. Um, one, it took way too long. Um, two, uh, I forgot a bunch of parts. Well, not parts, but tools to get the job done. Um, like a socket came back. Then I forgot drill bits, had to go back out. It was pretty poor planning, but um, it was a long video. It it would have been super long, a lot of editing. So I just went in with this just to give you guys a quick overview of what it is actually done. So I actually got the Mishimoto oil cooler for the car. Um, got it all installed, wrapped up over. It was only it only took like about actually working on the car maybe four hours, five hours. But it was all the the small things, having to go pick up drill bits and come back and go get a socket for the filter housing to sandwich plate um it all added up an extra time um let me go ahead and explain it a little bit better so obviously it looks the same up here you can't really see it up front the only thing you can really tell is the oil lines coming out of the cooler i mean you can see the m logo down there sort of and you can see it through the top But, um, so, you know, I left these, left these off because I can, that way I can give you guys a little bit more of a detailed see-through with it. Um, so, let me just take it step by step of what you're going to end up having to do. So, you're going to have to take this off. So, obviously, you have to take the four little push clips on the little air dam. Go ahead and pull that off. If you have the stock air box, go ahead and take that whole air box out of there. Um, it'll give you some extra space. If you have the short ram intake, hopefully you don't because this actually kills power for you guys, especially for, for us, 3.8 people. Um, go ahead and just pop the whole thing off, unmount it, pull that whole thing out to give you all this extra space. Um, also take the coolant reservoir off and the fan off. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the whole front bumper off of it. Obviously you're going to have to clip it off off of these two tabs take off the two fender screws which are up in there on each side and then just go ahead and pry up or pry out pry out pry out make sure these two tabs don't lock back in place when you're doing it and then same thing just pull the whole front bumper off if you have fog lights disconnect the fog lights because you're not going to get very far once that bumper comes off with the fog lights attached and that'll give you access to all in through the front and all back through here. So this will all be open. You got all this extra space open because you're gonna need to. You're gonna have to get down in there to the oil filter housing, which is right down in here, which is gonna be fastened down by four 12, mil, 12 millimeter bolts. Go ahead, back all those off. Take the whole housing off. And if you didn't already, drain the oil while you're at it too, because a lot of oil is going to come out and you might as well change the oil while you're doing this. So I actually waited for my oil change interval to come up and I actually just ended up buying it. I've actually been waiting for it for a while, but yeah, so I got it. Um, down there you can see that you got the oil filter housing down there. So that's right there. So you got the oil filter housing. Right next to it is the sandwich plate. And then coming out of the left side or the front half of the car is the temperature sensor that's going into the pro sport gauge. And then on the right side, I have the pressure sensor, which is going to the pro sport gauge. But we'll get into the whole wiring aspect later. Um, now, there's two ways to attach that uh, sandwich plate. You can attach the sandwich plate straight to the housing and then, you know, bolt it down, but leave it loose enough that it can still swivel and then attach the lines or the little bit easier route is attach the two oil lines to the sandwich plate and then put the sandwich plate on the filter housing which is the route I did because you can actually maneuver the lines a little bit better that way um, make sure the oil filter housing is tightened down first those four 12 millimeter bolts tighten them down to 15 to 20 foot pounds of torque then once you get the line secured and routed the way you want them to go up front, 
you don't have to necessarily mount it to the oil cooler itself but just around the front portion like the fender liners you can go ahead and route them in there minor shot right now i haven't i have another set at my house but i didn't put them on yet um like i routed the bottom one around the bottom and then there's a the top one like a little bit it's like right behind this reservoir container on the front front end wrap the uh the short the actual inside intake side of the oil hosing on that now once you get it, the leads up front they'll just be out here and then you can finish wrapping it up on the back side um go ahead you're going to want to tighten that main nut down which is a 27 millimeter socket that's one of the reasons i had to go and get that socket because i did not have a socket that big and then you're going to want to torque that down to 40 foot pounds is what i torqued mine down at and after i did all that um go ahead so the oil filter housing's tightened down to 15 foot pounds the actual sandwich plate will be tightened down 40 foot pounds and then you'll have the oil lines the oil lines tighten those down to the sandwich plate just about hand tight a little bit over hand tight don't tighten them too much you don't want to strip out that aluminum um, i did put thread tape on the ends that go into the sandwich plate that's the only time i use thread tape is on those lines going into the sandwich plate itself and a little bit of thread tape on the temperature sensor and the pressure sensor but they have plugs in them so if you're not going to use them just leave them alone they're already set and then after that you can mount it any way you want up front but I mounted mine on the back of the uh, front crash bar so I took the whole bar off which is I wanted to say it was three three 10 millimeter bolts and one eight millimeter nut on each side and then the whole front beam comes off and then I literally just flip the beam around and then there's uh, two flat spots uh, on the top end and on the bottom end the top end I wanted to mount it up higher so you could actually see the M logo through the grill but the actual hoses themselves are not long enough so i'd have to go with like probably like five or six inches maybe longer on hosing so i can actually stretch it up and plus i was kind of worried about how high it was going to actually sit up inside there because those those bends actually sit up pretty high so i mean it looks like i have enough clearance in there but just wanted to be safe so same thing once you find a mounting spot for it i mean you can mount it over over down here I left all down here open because I'm going to be running boost later on, so I want this to stay open for the intercooler. Um, go ahead and fasten it down however you're going to do it. Um, like I said, I try to do it the cleaner way and mount it behind the crash bar. That way it looks cleaner and it's not sitting way out front because then you'd run into clearance issues with the little mustache portion or the top grill portion. Um, and then same concept with these fittings right here, you're going to want to tighten these down just a little over hand tight because they they fasten right into the oil cooler itself so go ahead and just fasten these down to the oil cooler just a little over hand tight and then same thing with the other side and then fill it up with some oil for me it took about seven quarts for startup but once the system's actually full you'll never that that oil in that oil cooler is never going to leave like consistently anyways it's not going to just drain out when you drain your oil so that coil that oil cooler will be full still of oil so once you do it again it'll probably be around six six and a half quarts um but that's pretty much pretty much it on that end and then if you do go and do that run the car and watch watch for any kind of oil leaks from any of those fittings from the oil cooler itself watch the fittings all the way back back down to the sandwich plate watch the sandwich plate and watch the oil filter housing and as long as you put a, a, like a little bit of oil a little bit of old oil on the o-rings on that attached to the back side of the oil filter housing that attached to the block that should seal a little bit better and the same thing with the sandwich plate and the oil filter they have little up rubber o-rings on the back of them just put a little oil on the back of them that way they seal a little bit better that'll help you out on those at least three aspects there and as long as you torque it down it should be fine now i haven't had any leaks yet i'm still going good um but we'll get into the little wiring portion now if you are running gauges and you want to run the wiring um go ahead get some wire uh preferably something that's a little bit like sturdy 
something that you can you know will be a little bit heat resistant don't go and get some like thin gauge wire um, that's just gonna it's just gonna be too flimsy and when you go from the sandwich plate which is down there when you go from the sandwich plate I hopped over straight across um, I gave it a little bit of slack in there just in case when the engine actually you know torques over a little bit it doesn't try to rip those wires off I led I led the wire straight up straight up across and then I zip tied them right there and then that's where right here is where I jumped over from the I'm pretty sure that is the power steering line power steering line over to the body of the car and fastened it down there right here so this one is the pressure and the other the one behind it is temp and I like try to route it underneath everything so it's nice and clean same thing within here routed it way up underneath stayed underneath this main box went further in further in and then I started routing up behind everything and then like you can see here I forgot to cut this zip tie um, got to cut, cut the zip tie here but I just routed the wiring up through into the sound tube hole which leads into the cabin I want to reroute these that way it looks cleaner because it looks a little chintzy three wires going into this little sound tube hole and then I let it into the back of the cabin to the middle of the car and then routed it up through towards the radio so I can give you guys a little start up and show you that you know the gauge is working and everything like that um, <clears throat> now like I said let me start this real quick now the thing I did notice is that on startup you'll hear it humming don't be alarmed by it don't freak out by it it's just I'm guessing it's just the oil pump pumping the oil through the actual oil cooler itself it sounds like a humming like it's like a weird almost like a supercharged hum slash whine it's a weird humming noise you'll you'll hear it when you get it but then like here's my here's the pro sport gauges we're sitting at 15 16 and then we got the temperature gauge and then obviously I've had the air fuel hooked up for a while now, you know. Let me if I can give you guys a sound so you can hear it. I don't think you guys can hear it, but that's pretty much it. And then, like I said, you just route the lines route the wiring back through up underneath everything and then it'll pop out right behind this and this is easy to take off I usually just snap this this whole bezel will separate from this piece and then you can get up underneath this piece pop out the back first and then slide it a little bit and then this main piece literally all you have to do is simply just pull back on the bottom and it'll pop these clips up and then just move your hand like halfway up it and then pull it out and then it exposes the whole back end so that's pretty easy on that as long as you know how to do some wiring super easy obviously it's all like color coded so if you get wiring you could try to match up wiring but I didn't really need any um, wiring for the pressure sensor I just needed it for the temperature sensor because so far the air fuel and the temperature came with long enough long enough wire for me to do it now in terms of time to do it it took me roughly about roughly about four to five hours now with me messing around going into the store a million times to get all this random stuff that i needed um it took a lot longer but yeah it, it only takes about four or five hours but constantly going messing around underneath the car you know all this and that if i would have had this camera on me it would have been just a nightmare honestly but the only thing I, the only downside is I wish you could actually see the oil cooler more because it's pretty much hidden behind all this and this portion of the grill. That's why I'm really thinking about running the um, the M&S front grill. I really want to order it, but I haven't ordered it yet because I'm still on the fence about it. Because I think this kind of gives it like a little bit of a design up front, but at the same time, it would be nice to have a whole open front end because then you could really actually see the oil cooler. Um, but if you have any questions, you can always ask me in the comments down below. I'll try to help you as best as I can. I mean, like I said, I literally just did it like two days ago, if that. 
Um, so don't be don't be afraid. Go ahead and ask away. Uh, for the actual oil cooler kit itself, I paid five twenty five for, and then I used like a little discount code. I got it was like five ten. It gave me like free shipping, I guess, and like a little bit off the actual price itself. So it came out to five ten for the whole kit itself, and then obviously oil. And then I used a I used an OEM 2013 2.0 spin-on filter from Hyundai, and it fits perfect. So. I mean, obviously you don't have to use the OEM filter, but I like it because it actually has a little baffle on the bottom of the filter that actually helps out a lot. So, but that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, we got tons of more stuff coming for this. I'm thinking about getting the test pipes for this car, but I'm still on the fence about it because I know I want to switch out the intake. But I don't know if I want to just wait for when I get the turbo kit since I already have that intake. You know, just leave it on there for now until I get it the in turbo kit or if i should get test pipes run the stock air box with like obviously like a k and air filter and then get it tuned for now and then when i run boost get it retuned and yes if i get tuned i'm gonna go with an alpha speed tune um i'll actually end up driving up to massachusetts i'm from pa so i'll end up driving up to massachusetts getting the dyno tune doing all that good stuff you know swapping plugs fresh oil hitting the dyno and seeing what it's actually putting down with the bolt-ons I actually have with it now and then seeing that power increase from stock to bolt-ons to boosted but if you like the video go ahead and leave a like if you're not already and you're a gen coupe owner subscribe to the channel guys we got some great content coming up for you um, if you're looking to get a Genesis, Genesis coupe definitely get one I'm not gonna lie they're really fun cars they're they're actually getting really cheap as well like if you look at some of my older some of my more recent videos I actually talk about it a lot because it's it's amazing how much these things are actually getting down in price um, you can get like some pretty clean ones like actually off like I've been seeing them on Facebook marketplace for like with 30 40 thousand miles for like 13 14 grand I mean that's pretty cheap and you can get them even cheaper than that I've seen them go for eight or nine for like the base models or for maybe like an R-Spec or something like that. You can get them for like 11, 12. But besides that, I'm going to wrap this video up because it's getting way too long. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. If you like the video, leave a like. And like always, guys, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you're